Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share some questions and answers that you guys have asked me after posting a video about my two cents with regards to the hair industry. There was an article written about things that our biggest pet peeves are for hairdressers and I had asked you guys to send me some questions of regarding what people want to know about hairdressers etc etc. So I'm going to go through those. A few of you guys had sent me them on YouTube and also on the sly. So here goes. Question number one, how can I find a stylist that's really good at cutting fine thin hair? So there are many ways to go about doing these. You can go online, look for reviews, but honestly, no matter what hair type you have, if you're looking for somebody who cuts fine hair like yours or thick hair like yours or whatever type of hair you have, go to your favorite restaurant. Go to your favorite restaurant one night, sit down, have dinner, look around. And if you see somebody who has an excellent haircut or a style that you admire, best thing to do is just go up to them, compliment them on their hair and ask who did it. You're not going to embarrass them. You're going to compliment them. Do not feel embarrassed about asking either because I've had many people tell me that they feel uncomfortable going up to people, asking them questions. But the best thing you can do for a stranger is give them a compliment. They would be very happy to tell you who does their hair. Hairstylists, usually know what they're really good at. You can always do a consultation and if you don't like what you see or what you've heard, go to a different stylist for another consultation. Hope that helps. Question number two is, why do I need a toner or a glaze? A toner does one of many things. First of all, a toner doesn't make your hair darker. It doesn't make your hair brighter either. It cancels out those unwanted pigments in your hair. So if you've had your hair lightened, highlighting, all over lightening, and it pulls a certain color that doesn't look complementary to your skin tone, such as like a bright yellow, a toner is going to take out that yellow tone. If you have an orangey kind of tone, sometimes you want to add some blue to it to kind of get rid of that orange to create a pretty beige. No, we're not trying to do a toner because we want to make it darker or do a toner because we want to make extra money, we are doing toners to make your hair look the best it can look. It also adds a lot of shine to the hair and when you have damaged hair also a lot of times there's conditioning toners that are really good for your hair on top of creating the perfect color. The glaze is something that you usually do all over for somebody who usually does like a one-step color and they want to match the roots to the ends because hair fades whether it's naturally colored or professionally colored. That said, you don't have to do a glaze every single time, but if you wash your hair every single day, a glaze is gonna last about 20 washes. So your hair will fade. So if you feel like your stylist is doing a glaze every time, it's probably because you're washing your hair too much. Question number three. A lot of times you're told that you might need a treatment or a mask, moisture, and to be honest with you, everybody needs a treatment. Whether you have fine hair, thick hair, curly hair, coarse hair, straight hair, whatever type of hair, your hair is constantly being damaged from the UV rays and from hair dryer, etc. You probably feel like you don't need it and if you don't feel like you need it, no big deal, but it is usually in your best interest to give yourself a nice little treatment once in a while and if your stylist wants to do that for you, they're gonna recommend the right one for you. Question number four. Why do I feel like products are being pushed on me? There are two reasons for that. One is maybe the stylist is feeling pressured from the salon that they have to sell a certain amount. And two is many salons will deduct pay from people who don't sell a certain amount, which is, I think, unethical. I will give you an example. In the past, I worked somewhere where I had to sell a certain amount of products. If I didn't sell a certain amount of products, I would be charged a certain amount per client who did not buy that product. Whether it's one product or 10 products, I had to sell a product to each person. That being said, I do think it's unethical, but it happens. When you feel like they're talking about products, it's part of their job. Part of our job is to see what your hair needs. If you're trying to create a certain look, there are certain products that we know that are going to work for you. I've never been too much of a product pusher, but I know that people can be a little forceful. Just don't feel like you have to buy a product. When we do recommend something for you, it means 
we have your best interest at heart. We want your hair to look good when you're leaving the salon. And when you go home, we want you to be able to recreate that look. Hope that helps. Question number five. A question that has always been a mystery for a lot of people is how we get paid. While I cannot speak for everyone, most salons will pay the stylist 50% commission. So 50% commission can mean anything from 20 bucks an hour to 100 bucks an hour. It just depends where you are, what city and state, obviously, the socioeconomic region that you're in, that will determine how much you're paying, what type of salon you're going to. Are you going to a really upscale salon? Chances are you're gonna have to pay more, but your stylist is also trained better, more experienced. When you go into like a hair cuttery, it's not a lot and you do get a lot of people and not to be disparaging to hair cuttery, it's fine. But you do get a lot of people that are coming right out of beauty school that go work at hair cuttery just to get that practice in. And so you're not gonna get the same type of service that you're gonna get in a more upscale, relaxed atmosphere where there are more senior stylists and more people who have been doing it for a long time and have been consistently taking classes and bettering themselves with continuing education. I've heard about some salons that only pay 30% and other salons pay 70%. It depends on so many different factors. I've known hairdressers who make nothing and I've heard of hairdressers making over a million dollars a year. Like it's, there's so many variables in that and it's all relative. Question number six is a two part question. Should I tip the assistant and should I tip the manager slash owner? And I say yes to both. You do have to understand that a lot of the pay does consist of tips. Hairdressers Hairdressers do not get paid vacation. We do not get sick days. We do not get health insurance. We pay everything out of pocket. Many salons will give you a 1099, so they're not paying for your taxes, your social security. You are paying for all of that yourself. So when you feel like, ugh, you know, why do I have to tip? We rely on that a lot. It is about maybe 30 to 40% of our income many times. Like I said, we don't get health insurance. We don't get paid vacations. We don't get paid sick leave. We don't get paid family leave. We don't get maternity leave. None of that is ever covered. So everything we do, we have to pay for ourselves. We also get charged for all the products we're using on you. We get charged for every color we do on you. We get charged for every assistant we use. You know, sometimes you have to pay for your own assistant. And that's not something that we generally tell you. But when we say, you know, we have an assistant today, that means we're paying them directly. And so if we're not making enough tips, we can't pay them, but we still have to. It might come out of our paycheck, depending on what's salon you work in. Again, they're all very different. Do I feel like the industry needs an overhaul? Yes. Do I feel like we need a union? Yes. I don't have the energy for that, but I really believe that something needs to change in the hair industry because it is a lot of work, a lot of backbreaking work, and not a lot of benefits. I hope you guys enjoyed this informative video, and if you have any questions, always feel free to ask me down below in the comments section. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye.